look at the size of that thing. I mean, that thing is gorgeous. The character, the moss, the lichens. Eh? Huh? I'm liking the lichen. Huh? Liking the lichen. That is sweet. And this will be the last piece. When we go ahead and cut all the way back to here, we actually have to raise this up, get liner underneath that leg, take some of the patio out, and we're gonna be doing a nice big waterfall back here. Thanks for that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Nothing's easy. Listen, you guys told me I could do whatever I want. And you are. And you are. Brian, I heard you holler. Hey, huh? St. Bart's, huh? <laughs> that was like your seal impression. <laughs> or, 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 or. <laughs> no, seal impression. Kissed by Rose <laughs> on a day. Or, 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 or. <laughs> <laughs> What is up everybody? We are day two. two. Well, three for you. Two and a half. Well, yeah. What do you think, first of all, the progress? And then what's the direction for today there, Capitan? I think we hit the mark yesterday. We talked about wanting to get the pond pretty much done and that's where we're at. Now we can start digging this deep stream. We're gonna pull this liner back. We're gonna start carving this all out. We're going down 18 inches below water level, so it's gonna be nice deep water in here. We're gonna find a slab to do a crossing somewhere in here. We wanna bring the water tight up against this patio so it's, again, it feels like you're on the water. We've accomplished that with the pond over the deck. Now we wanna have the same feel over at our man cave. Yes. This is gonna be interesting. I started with a sketch, but it's really just a loose sketch. Mm -hmm. This is going to be totally organic when we create this section here. We're going to bring a bunch of fountainscape pieces in and start fitting them together and see how they look and start cutting and carving and making it all kind of melt together as one feature. I'm excited to do that. And then this will be the last piece. When we go ahead and cut all the way back to here, we actually have to raise this up, get liner underneath that leg, take some of the patio out, and we're going to be doing a nice big waterfall back here. Thanks for that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Nothing's easy. Listen, you guys told me I could do whatever I want. And you are. And you are. So the idea is too, we're gonna work our way out going that way, correct? This so get, This is where it gets tight because the machine is gonna really start running out of space here. We're gonna cut off our access here, which I'm kind of worried about. We've got all these boulder stage over here, which means we have to get them all over to the loading dock and start working from that area. I think that might slow things down a little bit. Hopefully we can keep this machine moving because we've gotten great results up until this point. I don't want to lose that because we do have four days left to make this all happen, which seems like a lot at the time, but knowing how much we want to try and get into this space, I feel like we'll run out of that time real fast. What do you guys think? Okay, good. <laughs> so one of the coolest things about this process is completely organic, and I love incorporating driftwood elements and things other than just rock into the water feature. So Jack just found a piece of big, huge stump that we harvested a few weeks back, and he's about to bring it in, and we're gonna try and work it. I'm gonna turn the camera on and show you this bad boy. All right, Jack. Look at the size of that thing. I mean, that thing is gorgeous. The character, the moss, the lichens. Eh? I'm liking the lichen. Eh? Liking the lichen. That is sweet. Now we know it's not necessarily driftwood because there is some pieces of it that are rotting back in here, but just the character and all of the cool stuff is all over it. The moss, the lichens, the patina and the cedar. There's so much cool stuff. The root flare. Jack, you saw this piece out there and you're like, we're gonna try it. I hope it fits. <laughs> Norman. I'm thinking we can put it back in here and maybe that leg comes in between the trees. What we're trying to do is hide this. But this whole mess of stuff, if we can get this stump kind of in front of this and then we'll take some of our evergreens and block it this way. Perfect. We're not staring at all this pipe and all this nonsense here. So let's strap it up and try and sling it in there. I'd say. All right. When you're incorporating driftwood elements or things other than rocks in your water features, what are some of the characteristics you're looking for and what's the reasoning behind that? For me, something like this I probably wouldn't use in the water. This was taken out of the woods, it's already rotting. You put it in the water, it's gonna turn the whole pond brown. Yep. When I use driftwood in the water, it's gonna be usually salt cured, comes from like outer banks or something like that, where it's already been in water and it's somewhat sealed up. But I love the element of wood, because honestly, when you look at any natural waterway, there's usually fallen wood, there's a stump uh, worked into the rock work and the kind of the water's lapping up against it, and you get all those marsh plants that fill in around it. It just lends so much credibility to a natural looking water feature. That's an excellent, excellent point. Well. So we'll strap it up and then we'll see what we can do with it, huh?
So there is that stump element that we just worked in and it looks like Colby and Anthony are starting to lay the underlayment for the deep stream or shallow pond, if you will, because this will still be about 18 inches of water in through here. They've already got it excavated out. You can see the nice contour, how it's going to be kind of a serpentine shape in through there. So they are laying underlayment and then we'll bring the liner over. And what'll happen now is once that liner gets in, we'll seam the two pieces together since it will be underwater and it will be incapable of doing an overlap in this scenario. So that It'll take a little bit of time doing that and then it looks like we'll probably end up incorporating a couple boulders back behind this entryway into the pond from this deep stream and then everything else will carry out back that way It'll be a really really neat look the fish will be able to swim from underneath the deck over here all the way up over up super close to the patio in front of the man cave and even further back so super awesome design element from jack over there love it love how it's turned together also love the amount of progress that we've been able to make so far so early in the day so that's a huge confidence booster for us. So we're gonna keep closing things out and keep rolling. So it's looking awesome guys and girls out there. And I cannot wait to see this pond get rinsed down and start filling up as we start moving back behind us. So let's go. got the liner seam down over here. We're getting ready for our deep stream. More importantly, we're getting ready for the bridge, which is always one of my favorite parts. So let's go check in with Jack and see what we've got going on over here. And a little explanation of what we're doing to prep before uh, we set that stone. Okay, here's the idea. What we want to have, instead of just one big slab of stone where you're crossing over, we're going to have it where it looks like they're floating in the water with a little gap in between. How we're going to do that is we're going to take one of these large slabs like that there. We're going to sink it into our actual dirt over here. That's going to be given support and then out in the middle we're going to do some block work that we can rest it on. We want the stone sitting in the water probably a good two or three inch. When you're walking over the water is actually lapping up against it. With that gap it's going to send that water just kind of rocketing through there. A lot of current. Fish are going to go come up and down here underneath these stepping stones. Kind of like a fish treadmill I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be the centerpiece like of this whole area because this is the only way you can get from the house back to the man cave studio. So this is going to be an important part of the whole landscape element. And of course, if you look out the window, who doesn't want to go over the water? This is going to draw you right in and just enhance the whole experience. And what an awesome bridge, right? Yes. Just a big slab of stone. So I think more often than not, both of us are on the same page when we're explaining to a customer the idea of a bridge. Very rarely are we thinking like the traditional big arced wooden bridge. That's what most people picture like oh it's gonna be a, a wooden bridge with like handrails on it I personally hate them yeah. I don't think they look good it's rare where you can make something like that look good so when you have an element like this and ideally it's just gonna be a component it's not gonna be something that sticks out like a sore thumb that's where it's gonna be great having that stuff in the water and the big boulders lapping up against it you see part of it as you look up the stream but it's gonna look like it makes sense because it's not sticking up out of the landscape taking away from the whole thing yeah. and then on this the bridge shouldn't be the focal point the shed should be the focal Absolutely. point, the house, the pond, the waterfall, waterfall everything but the here. bridge. The bridge There's is a lot of focal points. Yeah. Here. <laughs> awesome. Brian, I heard you holler. Hey, huh? Steve Martz, huh? <laughs> that was like your seal impression. <laughs> or, 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 or. <laughs> no, seal impression. Kissed by Rose <laughs> on a day. Ooh, I knew that's what you're <laughs> Right now, I'm gonna whisper because I don't want to break Brian's focus. But he is attempting to set the first bridge stone in one try. This has almost never been done before. That's not true. Always gets done like that. Explain to us what's going on. Instead of doing one giant bridge, we've done this technique where we bring another piece in really close to this. Yep. We leave a little one inch, two inch gap, whatever you want. But 
we're hoping that the water level in the pond comes like up into here someplace. Like keep it down on the gap, it'll just water will just drip through here. It's really just shooting. And the like, fish love that. So the koi will want to play in that current and they'll come up in here and then encourage them to go discover the rest of the area. So it's just a technique that if we don't have one giant slab, we just take two smaller slabs and, and bring them close to each other. And it looks cool. Now our next obstacle, you can see how high the train is over here. Yep. So we want to get all of this kind of leveled out. We might even bring it down into this. Down to the bridge then, yeah. you're saying. Gotcha. And then we've got a Jack wants to design a fountain scheme that kind of feeds in, almost a tributary that feeds in to this stream area here and then moves off. Cool. Because the waterfall that's starting off everything won't be visible from the house behind you, so yeah. the fountainscape was really... That waterfall is really primarily visible from the shed yep. over here, the studio, and then this gives us something to look at over here. The bridge ties the two places together. What? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's all about the details. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't. I, I'm not paying over to him. <laughs> oh, we got another one over here. Oh boy! Yep. I'm not thinking the whole tree will be leafed out in two days. Maybe by March. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What'd you say? <laughs> jump, jump, let's go! difference that's probably Jack's right there and this is mine black coffee from McDonald's simple and easy right yeah all right Andrew you get the rest people think I don't work here <laughs> <laughs> keeping the place running smooth powered by coffee you know that if I'm around it's gonna be Starbucks runs for the guys and cookies they need to that these cookies are in Stay with my friends. yeah at least they'll like me for five minutes Hasbro. Always seems to be the issue. <laughs> when you're trying to do something custom, you really have to think outside the box. We're going to be incorporating a lot of these stack slate sphere pieces. We've got sections of urns, like a medium, large sections. We've got stack slate walls. I envision just water kind of raining down at different spots. Like we're going to, it's going to be coming down the texture of this face here, which is going to look really nice. And then we're going to be cutting like four or five inch slots into here, and we'll get nice clean ribbons of water cascading down. We're actually going to take one of these. This is a medium bottom section. It's going to be elevated like this high, and we're going to cut it into this wall to form fit it. So it's going to start to look like one entire conglomeration. Of stuff. <laughs> then we've got to like set some big boulders out here. We've got to be very conscious of our spatial alignment here because we can run out of space real fast and start putting a lot of this stuff in here along with big boulders because we have a very hard line to work with with this large boulder that's framing out for the pergola. Then we want to come off here with some manufactured wall block. We want a nice clean edge, papers right on top, so it's gonna be a nice clean look to be standing over here, seeing this beautiful soundscape on this side, and we're gonna get a great visual from the house. It's uh, time to get started. <laughs> The best part about this is I'm not paying for any of this stuff. <laughs> so we can just pack it up. And yeah. Oops, it up. oops, give me another one. 